These things are actually the fruits of serious deviation. The main five deviation of, deviations of cults are usually this. Deviation in the names and attributes of Allah or His essence. Deviation in the, infallibilities of the, in the infallibility of the prophets. Deviation in the essence messengership, me, me, messengership or primordial pra, uh, status of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The place of the interpretative discipline of orthodox Islam and the principles that exist in it, and the Qur'an and Sunnah as their sources, whether in its revelation, its prohibitions, or its orders. These are the main five areas that cults go astray in. Any other deviation that they have is going to fall under one of these five. Do not get into a battle of fighting over peripheral issues. Number three, do not hover over them, making the home a tense atmosphere. Because if you do that, they'll come home less often, and again, you will fall into the issue of self-fulfilling prophecy where you are seen as the aggressor and they are the pure Muslim standing up for truth. Number four, go to, do not go to battle without understanding who you are dealing with. If you are using Islamic sources, you need to know what they are so as to put them in context. If they are not Islamic sources, you should also be aware. Keep this in, keep this in mind. Imam Ahmed ibn Hanbal rahimahullah when brought into the court of the Mu'tazila cult, rather than speaking with and arguing with other ulama in captivity in his jail cell on what to do, he remained silent and observed how these cultists held court. He watched their body language, their actions, their speech, and paid careful attention to the doctrines that they preached. It was from this careful observation that he was actually able to completely dismantle and render null and void their arguments. So, understand who you're dealing with, listen carefully to the statements that they make, and then you can refute what they say with clear and a full understanding of Orthodox Islam. Number five, do not let your hatred for the cults radiate in your dealings with the loved one that is in the cult. There were people who committed murder, major shirk, and other things, and were treated by the Prophet Muhammad wasallam with equity and justice. We have to exercise that same attitude. Some of these people took part in the murder of one of his daughters, but never once did he let it become a personal matter. As history books record, when he took control of Mecca, it was a bloodless handover. This is one of the most unbelievable examples of change of government in the history of earth. So if the Prophet Muhammad wasallam did not let these issues become personal, neither must we. Neither must we. Number six, do not make concessions in major doctrinal matters in an attempt to appease the loved one in the cult. Do not do that. Do not make the mistake of doing that. Because you could fall into fitna. For example, if the cult that they're following worships another god besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, do not make concessions and say, well, we both worship the same god, what does it matter, and then go on to the next thing. No. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, Qul ya ayyuhal kafirun, la a'budu ma ta'budun, wa la antum a'abidun ma a'bud, wa la ana a'abidun ma a'badtum, wa la antum a'abidun ma a'bud, lakum dinukum al yadeen. He has said, O oh you, say O oh you kafirun, I do not worship what you worship, nor do you worship what I worship. I am not a worshipper of what you worship, nor are you worshippers of what I worship. You have your religion, and I have mine. Surat al-Kafirun. You mustn't make doctrinal concessions in matters that you are not allowed to. The loved one in the cult must be shown love, but at the same time we must be firm on what is Orthodox Islam. Number seven, do not attack or repudiate their cult heroes as people. Only focus on the belief of the organization and its leader. For example, many of us are aware and know that Ghulam Ahmed of Qadian had a withered hand through most of his early life. And the hand was always withered. This should not be a point that we take and use to make fun of Ghulam Ahmed of Qadian. Because we're not worried about his hand. We're worried about his false beliefs and his false doctrine. 
by attacking him as a person, you deify him and exalt his status in the eyes of the cultists or the initiates of his cult, one of them being your loved one. Do not make that mistake. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said about this. وَلَا تَسُبُّ الَّذِينَ يَدْعُونَ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ فَيَسُبُّ اللَّهَ عَدُوًّا بِغَيْرِ الْعِلْمِ كَذَلِكَ زَيِّنَ لِكُلِّ أُمَّةٍ عَمَلَهُمْ ثُمَّ إِلَى الرَّبِّهِمْ مَرْجِعُهُمْ فَيُنَبِّئُهُمْ بِمَا كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ And do not curse those who are called on from besides Allah so that they might curse Allah in enmity without knowledge. Surah An'am, Ayah 108. So, don't curse or insult those whom they call upon besides Allah, so that they might curse Allah wrongfully without knowledge. We have to make sure that we're careful. Do not let the attack become personal, because they could attack Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number eight, do not expect them to come out of the cult instantly. Most people reveal their cultism after some time when they feel confident. Although sometimes people do snap out of it suddenly, your case may not be the same. So don't count on them popping out of it at the exact moment that you speak to them. That may not happen. Not only that, but before they revealed their cultism to you, they may have been studying it for a year, two years, maybe three. And eventually they got up the actual confidence to reveal it to you. So you have to be careful. You don't know how long they've been studying it or who they've been studying it with. You have to exercise caution and work productively and systematically. It took Abu Sufyan عنه, and the Meccans 23 years before they emerged from the darkness of their idol worship into the light of Islam. But the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, was patient, persistent, and pragmatic. And that's what we have to have, the three Ps. Now I've tried to collect as much information as I could on the cults. And the website that I've done this on, it is www.htspub htspub.com www.htspub.com and what I have done is I have given the names of the cults their numbers, their founder, their key beliefs so if you suspect that perhaps maybe you have a loved one or maybe you are certain that you have a loved one in one of the cults I've spoken about today or maybe the one, one of the ones that are mentioned on the website, you can look into the doctrines of this cult and understand what stance you should take, what doctrinal position you should take, and what approach you should adopt when dealing with a loved one in a cult. I hope and pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He gives us the strength and the ability to resist the occult, to resist evil, and to fight them with the weapons of the Qur'an and Sunnah, those being Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's two revelations. Insha'Allah, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he helps us. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. And if any of you have questions after the show, I will be here for perhaps an additional five to ten minutes. The numbers are 8411-800 and 8411-900. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all with wisdom. Again, the numbers are 8411-800 and 8411-900. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen.